टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ जॉन्डस पैथो फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ ऑफ जॉन्डस हाउ डू यू डिफाइन जॉन्डस यस प्लीज वट्स योर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जॉन्डस it's a it's a yellow discoloration of eyes uh, uh for example if someone is taking lot of carrots and lot of beta carotene has gone to the body and some tissue turns yellow is that jaundice that is not jaundice uh, just increase in bilirubin level is not jaundice because sometimes bilirubin level goes slightly above the normal level and we say there is hyperbilirubinemia but if it does not impart the yellow color in skin or mucous membrane or interstitial fluid or sclera we don't call that jaundice so i think before you tell me new definitions i must tell you what is jaundice John, there are three terms which you should be clear number one jaundice another term is hyper bilirubinemia then there is jaundice then there is another term is ecterus then an other term is cholestasis these are terms which should be differentiated from each other first of all we must know that you know bilirubin is produced mainly as a during the breakdown of rbcs and other hemoproteins and bilirubin is highly toxic molecule and because bilirubin is constantly being produced in our body whenever rbcs are breaking down and whenever hemoproteins are breaking down uh, these toxic molecules because they are daily produced about 0.2 to 0.3 grams per day so this uh, bilirubin should be pushed out of the body body should have very very efficient mechanism to get rid of bilirubin but if bilirubin levels go above normal in the body first of all you should know what is the normal level of bilirubin what is the normal level of bilirubin yeah 0.2 to some people 1.2 mg per dl some people take it up to 1.6 anyway if we say this is the normal level of bilirubin 0.2 to 1.2 mg per dl right and if your level go above that we say there is hyperbilirubinemia so how do we define hyperbilirubinemia that bilirubin level in the body is more than normal levels this is that right now actually what really happens look here this is normal bilirubin level normal bilirubin level range right 0.2 to 1.2 if someone bilirubin level goes up to this level this level this level is not going to develop yellow coloration of skin or sclera or the mucous membrane or interstitial fluid actually significant concentration of bilirubin should be there so that enough yellow coloration of the body tissues occur so that it can be appreciated by the eyes of the examiner usually it happens when bilirubin level is somewhere around 2.5 mg per dl when bilirubin level when it is going up when it reaches around 2.5 mg per dl then what really happens that observer can identify the presence of high bilirubin level is that right and how the observer decides because patient shows that there is yellow coloration of or discoloration of the skin and mucous membranes and sclera and when you have especially skin and mucous membrane with yellow coloration due to hyperbilirubinemia we call the condition jaundice so what is jaundice jaundice is yellow discoloration of the skin mucous membrane and interstitial fluids right due to and sclera due to hyperbilirubinemia due to hyperbilirubinemia right it means every hyperbilirubinemia is not jaundice very mild hyperbilirubinemia is not jaundice right hyperbilirubinemia should be up to a level that it should that observer people are able to observing people are able to you can say appreciate the yellow coloration of the skin or the mucous membrane or the sclera or the 
interstitial fluid, then we say jaundice is there. Is that right? Another important thing is, what is acterus? Acterus is the term which is used when specially due to hyperbilirubinemia, sclera turns yellow. When we say, I can detect the acterus in this patient, it means we are, so person is specifically referring to yellow discoloration of sclera. Is that right? Again, what is acterus? Acterus is yellow coloration of sclera due to hyperbilirubinemia. Remember that uh, sclera shows the yellow coloration very easily as compared to the rest of the body tissues. The reason being number one, sclera is white, so yellow, faint yellow color can be appreciated. Secondly, it's a scleral uh, certain uh, connective tissue molecules, they love to bind the bilirubin. D due to these two reasons, what really happens that acterus is usually appreciable before the full-blown jaundice develops all over the body. If the, you are really uh, watching your patient, uh, you can see examining your patient serially, right? Again, I will repeat. What is hyperbilirubinemia? When your bilirubin level is more than normal. What is jaundice? When hyperbilirubinemia leads to yellow coloration of skin, mucous membranes, sclera and interstitial fluids. Right? What is the terrace? When, when we are specifically referring to yellow coloration of sclera, sclera due to hyperbilirubinemia. Due to hyperbilirubinemia. Because if there is yellow coloration of body tissue due to some other reason, that should not be considered jaundice. Then another thing which is there is what is cholestasis. Yes. Have you heard of this term, cholestasis? What is cholestasis? Yes, please. Dr. Kashif, what is cholestasis? Right, he is very right. Actually, what he is talking about, that there is impaired bile outflow. Right? He is right. Under these circumstances, not only bilirubin spills over into blood, but other content of bile may also spill into blood. You know, bile has three, many contents, but three most important contents of the bile you should never forget. And what are those? Three most important contents of the bile. There is bilirubin. The bile acids or salt. or salt, right? And what is the third component of it? Yes, please. Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Right? Now, when we say this hyperbilirubinemia, it means we are specifically talking about increased concentration of Bilirubin, we are not commenting on level of cholesterol or level of bile acids or bile salt. But sometimes it happens that bile outflow from hepatocytes or from the bile ducts stops. Right? And all these substances regurgitate into blood. So, if someone has raised level of bilirubin along with that bile salts along and acids and along with that cholesterol, all of these substances are raised into blood, then we say person is suffering with cholestasis. What is cholestasis? Cholestasis is that there is impairment of bile flow outflow. Of course, you know bile is formed from the hepatocytes and thrown into intrahepatic biliary canaliculi and from there it goes to the extrahepatic biliary drainage system. You must be knowing there is right hepatic duct and there is left hepatic duct. They fuse together to make common hepatic duct. Then there is gallbladder cystic duct and then there is common bile duct which fuses with the pancreatic duct in most of the patient. Is that right? And opens at the duodenum at ample of water. Is that right? Now, if there is problem with that system, let me draw the diagram. Let's suppose that here is your liver. Right? Uh, hypothetically, if these are your hepatocytes and these are biliary canalicular system, These are biliary canalicular system. Right. 
of course you must be knowing that here is your gas pancreas. Now what really we see there? What we really see there, right? These are considered intra this point number one, intrahepatic biliary canaliculi. Point number one is intrahepatic biliary canaliculi, right? Then, of course, you can say from both sides, this is right hepatic duct, and what is it? left hepatic duct and right and left hepatic duct they fuse together to make what common hepatic duct and what is this fusing with the common hepatic duct cystic duct and then common hepatic duct and cystic duct when they fuse together they make what is this common bile duct and common bile duct fuses with which other duct pancreatic duct so pancreatic juices and bile both can come out from this particular RFS what is this ample of water and surrounded by sphincter of OD this is called bile out outflow system right if there is obstruction with this bile outflow system at any level then whatever bile was uh, draining through this to the GAT their drainage will be impaired and this bile will be regurgitated into circulation and when this bile will be regurgitated into circulation what really happens we say not only uh, bilirubin will go to circulation but along with bilirubin bile acids will go to circulation even cholesterol will also go to circulation right and we call this condition cholestasis is that right but Right, but sometimes what happens, problem is let's suppose at this level that bilirubin cannot be conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin go high in the blood. Under these circumstances, bile acids are drained well, right, and cholesterol is drained well. So only unconjugated bilirubin goes high in the blood. This kind of hyperbilirubinemia should not be called cholestasis, right.